I want to thank all the parents for, for allowing the kids to come out here. Uh, Nate and Benny and his group for running this thing for us. And the tournament, like I said, all the communications you're getting and the way it's done is, is because of Jesus. So I want you guys to know that uh, she really cares about getting the information out to the coaches, the players, the scouts, the colleges. So we're working overtime for you guys. We call it uncertainty. We call it wonder. We call it fear. The player that's caught in between. He's caught where? In between. In between. He's a double-minded player. And he's worthless. To be great at the game of baseball, in the slowest game in the world, requires Split-second timing, split-second decisions, split-second reactions. If you're not on time, you are late. And if you're late as a hitter, what happens? Miss hit. If you're late in your delivery as a pitcher, we're talking one to two-tenths of a second. The pitcher is late in his delivery. It's the difference between a ball and a strike. The hitter's late one to two-tenths of a second, we don't pull the trigger or it's a miss hit. On the bases, the difference between a major league catcher and a high school catcher is two tenths of a second. On defense, the ball travels at 100 miles an hour. 100 feet and half a second. So if you're not on time, you're worthless. You're late. And when you're caught in between, the double-minded hitter the double minor base runner, the double minded pitcher. That means he's in the thought process during the moment of action. It's pretty weak. If I'm gonna grade you on your clap, you're not making my team. And if I put you in the dog category, I'd call you probably a chihuahua. Say it with me, baseball's a dog fight. Baseball's a dog fight. And the bulldog wins. And the bulldog wins. If you ain't a bulldog, let me tell you something, you don't have a chance. I was coming home from our workout last weekend. At the end of the day, there's a five-tool player prospect on the mound from Maui, Hawaii. Five-tooler. He's on the mound with a plus arm. He's going into his senior year. There's a 2019 5'3", 105-pounder at the plate. Who do you think won the battle? <coughs> David. Not Goliath, the little hitter. Then I get in my car and I'm driving home. My buddy sends me a text. He's the leadoff hitter for Vanderbilt. What's his name? Roe Chapman. Coleman. No, it's Chapman. How tall is he? Five seven. Says he's five five, but he's probably five three. Because they always give you a couple. <laughs> he's one of the top hitters in the country. He's Team USA leadoff hitter. And then I turn on the radio. Three for three, Jose El Tuve, the best hitter in the big league. He's about 5'5". Five five. Stealing bases, stealing third, making the big leaders, big leaguers look like little leaguers. How big do you play the game? We're talking the sixth tool. There's five physical tools, we're talking the sixth tool. So if I grade you on your clap, you're a chihuahua. I want to feel you, and as a scout, I'm a part-time scout for the Milwaukee Brewers, one of the 30 major league teams. When we watch players play, we don't care how big you are, because there's big guys that play small, and there's small guys that play big. Is all we care about is how big do you play, because the Bulldog wins. It's a choice. And I can feel you when you clap, and there's a difference. When you clap with your heart. I want to feel you. B plus. I want to feel you. So right now you just struck out. Pitchers, put your hands up. 
We don't have any here, do we? We got all the hitters. SBS Bruins. You we just game. struck out, or the umpire made a bad call. I want to feel you. I want to feel you. I want to feel you. It's pretty good. Now, can I feel you 120 pitches throughout the game? How many pitches do you take off during a game as a hitter, as a defender? I'm going to give you ways to measure the six tool. The six tool is the separator. It's the great intangible. So the five tools are an article that came out the other day. Actually, it was two years ago. Time flies. We got any Mike Trout fans here? Mike Trout? Mike Trout is the man. And one reason why I love Mike Trout is he plays with a smile on his face. He enjoys the game. He's intense. He brings intensity. He brings energy. He brings energy without <laughs> tension. He brings energy without tension. Can you say that? Bring energy. Bring energy. Without tension. Without tension. Say relaxed. Relaxed. Intensity. Intensity. See, Mike Trout, he's the man. Because he's relaxed, and he's intense. He brings energy without tension. He's arguably the greatest player right now in the game. So the article came out. It was called the Trotsky Trout Parallel. And they're comparing Mike Trout with my grandfather, Hal Trotsky. The comparison Mike Trout, rookie season, 20 years old. Hal Trotsky, rookie season, 20 years old, Cleveland Indians. Mike Trout batted 326, 83 RBIs, 30 home runs, 49 stolen bases. Hal Trotsky, 333, 142 RBIs, 35 home runs, 3 stolen bases. Mike Trout, 5 tooler. Hal Trotsky, 3 tooler. But they both possess the sixth tool, the separator. When you play in your heart, you're in the present tense. You're present. The future, the past, the past is the did. We call it did focus. What do we call it? <laughs> did focus. It's what I did, it's what the umpire did, something that happened. You're in the past, you're in the did. You're in the present, you're in the do. If you're in the future, where are you? I don't. I hope I don't. I hope I don't hang this pitch. It's the don't. It's the did. But when you're in your heart, you're in the do. Where are you? The do. The do. The do is the hardest place to be. In the Dominican Republic, to go there through my seventh year, to go to the spring training complex to the summer league, you walk into the clubhouse, and they are in there. These are guys who are 16 years old. They're trying to come to the States to become major leaguers. Their genius is how simple can they keep the game without even trying to. They don't speak English. Say it with me. Ball. Ball. Strike. Strike. Out. 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 Safe. Safe. Hit. 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 Run. Run. That's what they're learning right there. You walk into their English class. Ball. Strike. Hit. Run. What do you think they think about when they get in the box? Nothing. Except the ball. The ball. And they're in the big leagues. 30%, 25. Simplicity. Simplicity. Present. <coughs> so the secret is this. I've been searching for the secret my whole life. And Alan talks about it all the time too. It's like we've been doing this forever. It goes back to simplicity. We call it vanilla. What do we call it? Vanilla. It's vanilla. It's not chocolate chip. It's not mocha almond fudge. It's vanilla. Vanilla is how many flavors? One. One. Simplicity. Be present. Be present and in your heart. When you're in the future, you're half-hearted. When you're in the past, you're half-hearted. And the best players play like bulldogs because they're in the present tense. Size is irrelevant. It's your heart. The most powerful and dominant hitter to ever play the game. What was his name? Hank Aaron. You know how big Hank was? He's like one inch taller than me. He weighed 10 more pounds. He's the most powerful hitter on the planet, ever. When he started hitting, he was hitting cross-handed in the minor leagues, leading, hitting with his what? With his what? All right. Who's the greatest base hitter of all time? Pete Rose. Rose. How big's Pete? Small. How big is he play? Pete from the Fierce, full most dominant pitcher in the last 25 years, his name is Greg Maddox. 
Greg Maddox, signed at 5'11", 155 pounds. The most dominant closer in the history of the game. 5'11", 165 pounds, Mariano Rivera. Maybe the most dominant pitcher to ever put cleats on and step on the mound, Pedro Martinez. 5'11", 165 pounds. That's how big you play. And as a scout, we can feel you. And I can tell you got the bite of a poodle, of a chihuahua, of a golden retriever. You got the bite of a bulldog. Does that mean we don't make mistakes? No, sir. So Mike Trout, you can measure his five tools because Mike Trout's a five-tooler. You can measure his throw tool with a radar gun. That's 95. You can measure his power tool with a tape measure or a radar gun with the exit speed coming off a tee. Bat speed, you can measure that power tool. That's two tools. The hit tool we're gonna measure by how often he squares up contact, his batting average, his batting statistic. That's your hit tool, that's three tools. Your fourth tool is your defensive tool. How do we measure that? Defensive statistics. Statistics. Defensive statistics. You guys say it? <laughs> By how you play the game. And what's the last tool? The run tool. How do we measure that? So we can measure them all with devices. How do we measure the sixth tool? How do we measure? Let me give you four ways to measure. Anybody can advance in the sixth tool department. Some guys are not born to throw 90 miles an hour, but everybody can grade high in the sixth tool. In your dollar value, a college prospect, a pro prospect, and someday as a businessman, he's going to determine by your sixth tool. Number one, what do you do when no one's looking? We call that self discipline. You guys say that. What do I do when no one's looking? Self discipline. Nice job. Okay, second one. So self discipline. <laughs> Carter Aldretti plays for Trotsky Baseball his sophomore year. He was at this tournament, the team that won the national championship that year, coach was in the bushes, literally for two days watching, seeing what he did, no one was looking. What did he do? He ended up getting about 10 scholarships because he kept the process greater than the result. He was focused on the process. What did he do when no one's looking? That college coach calls me up, so that's a guy. And I've been working with him for over 10 years. And I project him to possibly be a major league player someday, and that's how projection works. It's how you grade in the sixth tool. Because five tools are worthless unless you grade high in the sixth tool. Second one, what do you do when you don't feel like it? It's called self-motivation. What's it called? Self-motivation. So what do you do when no one's looking? Another Trotsky player, he's behind the dugout doing his J-bands. Greg Moore from Northridge, he was at USF at the time. He calls me up, he says, I'm gonna commit your guy. I said, why, Greg? He's 6'3", he throws 82 miles an hour. He goes, that 82 will be 92 in two years. I've watched him for three months. Three tournaments, I watched him, and every single time he's behind the dugout doing his band. Those bands, and his self-discipline, and his focus on the process, that 82 is gonna be 92. For a lot of you guys here today, your 60s, a 7.2, you know what it's gonna be in two years? Seven, maybe three. Too much in and out. It gets worse. Okay? So if I call up your coach, I say, what does he do when no one's looking? Man, he's out working. He's out fishing. Oh, he's great and high in the sixth tool. What does he do when he doesn't feel like it? Hey, interpret, getting his work and committing to the process. So the first one is self-discipline. The second one is self-motivation. The third one is self-control. When things go wrong, say it with me. My posture is even. Uh, Say it again. My composure is even. My posture is big. My memory is short. My bounce back is quick. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start a stopwatch. Immediately, when something goes wrong, I'm a scout, I pull out my stopwatch. How many seconds does it take you to keep your composure even, your posture big, your memory short, and how quick is your bounce back? The next pitch, are you on cue? The umpire makes a bad call, you step out, you take a breath. Took you six seconds to get back in. Next pitch, you hit it the other way. Because your mind is, what do you think? Present. What is it? Present. Focused on what you're doing, not what the umpire did. Now I got two strikes, not worrying about what I don't want to do. Self control. The last one, 
Self-confidence. What's the last one? Self-confidence. So how well do you compete? Say it with me. How well do I compete? How well do I compete? Regardless of how I feel, uh, situation, situation, circumstance. Circumstance. How many guys here would like to be a professional player someday? It's every single guy. Why is there such a despair of what you guys want and what we end up getting? It's deficiency in the six tool. We all focus on the five tools. We had a player today in our game. He calls me up this morning. He texted one of the coaches. We're talking six tools. Let me just tell you something. If you guys are not loyal to your commitments, then no one's interested in you. The scout, I have no interest in you, and no college coach is interested in a guy who's played you. He sends us a text this morning saying, I'm not coming to the game today because I got things I got to do. First of all, it's done on a text. We, secondly, we called hundreds of coaches to email to get him here to see him pitch. His lack of commitment. The commitment is essential. The special breed of player and his size and his strength is irrelevant. He plays with his heart and a fierce loyalty to the name that's stitched across the front of his uniform. The name stitched where? It's across the front. Your travel ball teams, if you're not committed to your teams and your high school coach, I'm telling you right now, there's no interest. Self-confidence. Stay with me. Regardless of the situation. Regardless of the circumstance. Stay with me. Come on. You know what you're doing when you're clapping? Are you double-minded? Are you caught in between? What are you thinking about doing? Clapping. We're talking about vanilla, right? So when you get in the box, what are you thinking about? <coughs> Squaring balls up. Say it with me. Square it up. Square it up. Pitchers. Making pitches. Making pitches. Can I hear you? Making pitches. Making pitches. I want to hear you. all of you. Making pitches. Making pitches. When you're stealing bases, what am I doing? I'm stealing bags. What are you doing? Stealing bags. I'm stealing bags. That's it. Quits a steal sign. I'm stealing bags. And I attack that thought. It's vanilla. Man, the catcher's got a good, good arm, though. The pitcher, he's got a good pickoff move. Been thrown out twice this year. I mean, the quiet is like a chihuahua. Locking. Baseball, the dog fight, the bulldog, win. Nice job. Let's have a great end of the day. When you guys are playing, don't get caught up in the results. Play hard. I got one from Allen. It's one of the best ones I ever heard. He said, the zone's always there and the zone's the sun. What's the zone? Sun. It's the greatest thing almost I've ever heard. One of the top probably ten because this. No one ever can teach the zone. How do you get to the zone? The zone's there. See the moon? It just took the place of the sun. That's the zone. When the clouds come, what does it block? The zone. The zone. Thoughts? The clouds. Keep your mind free, clear. Play hard. Composure is easy. Posture big. Memory short. Bounce back. It's quick. It's great to have some fun in the sim game. Let's do this thing. Jump up. Let's go. Six two.